Okay, I think we're ready. Welcome to the 8th house, everyone. So, I'm sitting down here today to talk to you a little bit about the Scorpio new moon that we just experienced. Right now, I'm not sure where the moon is, but the moon happened earlier. So, the exact new moon isn't happening as you're watching this, but the moon is still in Scorpio for a few, and then it's going to enter Sagittarius. A lot of things are entering Sagittarius right now. So yes, guys, happy new moon in Scorpio. We are still in Scorpio season. The sun has been in Scorpio for almost a month now. So, you know, I'm not sure how you guys are being affected by that. But there has been a lot of awareness shed on things that are, you know, dark and hidden and secretive. That's that Scorpio energy that's upon us right now. I was, I was thinking um, closer to the beginning of Scorpio season how strange it is for an object like the sun to move into a house like Scorpio. Scorpio is the eighth house in astrology, you guys. This is the eighth house of our universe. Um, this is the house that has everything to do with death. Death and rebirth. So no wonder these energies, Scorpio, um, one of the most misunderstood zodiac signs, rules, some of the most taboo, strange, plutonian, deep energy that, um, you know, it can be kind of cringy. A lot of people don't like to talk about death and things like that, but I love Scorpio energy. It's very, very still. I was thinking about that before I started recording how quiet this new moon is. So Scorpio, you know, since it rules secrets and stuff like that, it, to me, it brings up this kind of silence energy and how silence isn't really quiet. You know, silence can actually be very loud and uncomfortable for, for some people and awkward or whatever. So taboo, awkward, cringe, all these words are coming up here. Um, to me, I'm a Pisces. Um, I'm a water sign. So this energy, Scorpio energy for me, um, is my 10th house in my natal chart. So this energy to me, I just have to flow with it. You know, I do have some notes here that I'm looking down at, but I am just going to channel because this kind of energy, I mean, if you're brave enough to walk through the eighth house, which some of us have to, we all have to around this time of year, but not many of us dwell there or stay there, right? We talk about death and how it's supposed to be this quick and painless experience, right? This beautiful transformation and rebirth experience but no one um no one wants to stay in that kind of a spot for too long right we want to transform i'm not sure why i'm seeing the whole butterfly and cocoon energy right so we stay we stay in these areas of our lives for as long as we need to but this, this is a very very sacred time you guys and so i'm just gonna channel and see what comes up and at the end of the video, I will be pulling 12 cards for the 12 zodiac signs just to kind of give you a little bit of an insight of what this new moon is bringing forward to you as far as your, your sun sign or your rising or your moon, whatever you're watching for. But um, yeah, just a few, just a little bit of information for those of you who are new to astrology, new to my videos. This is a new moon. And every month we have a new moon and we have a full moon. The new moon always belongs to the zodiac sign that we're in. So we're in Scorpio season, and then and there's a new moon, okay? The, the sun and the moon are both in Scorpio. And when that happens, there is no light in the sky. I kind of like to think of it as the moon has become a seed that we've planted, okay, in the ground, a seed of intent. So you'll, you'll see a lot of astrologers around this time talking about um, planting seeds of intention, you know, um, setting our intentions and... In, in, um, you know, sending out energy into the universe that we want to see come to fruition by the full moon. So what I wrote down is intention setting time, planting seeds for the future full moon, okay? So that's what we're doing. Every month we have an opportunity. Not all of us do this, but it's great to take advantage of. Um, every new moon, I, I take out a piece of paper and I write down my, my dreams, my goals, my wishes, anything that I want to you know, see, come to fruition by the full moon. We have a full moon in Gemini at the end of this month. So we're working with Scorpio new moon, Gemini full moon. 
So we have this two week period, you guys, that takes place between. So the moon has to gain in light. Right now, there is no light. The moon is, has completely turned her back on us. Not, not literally, but she wants us to use our own light right now. So to me, new moons are about following your own light. When the full, when the moon is full of light, that's when things come to light, and you know that's when our subconsciouses become aware of certain things. But the new moon is a very dark time. Every new moon is a dark time. Now it depends, you know, energies like Gemini new moon when in Gemini season, when there's a new moon in Gemini, that that's still a dark energy. But since it's an air energy, it can be kind of lighthearted. But some new moons, like I say water new moons, Pisces new moon, Cancer new moons, Scorpio new moons, even Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn new moons, earth and water signs really bring out that, that dark quality, okay? Um, so this, this is definitely a dark time. Now, it's not going to be easy for those of you who still misinterpret darkness for evil. And um, I really hope none of you guys are watching my videos because I don't I don't like that kind of ignorance on my channel. Dark is not evil. Dark is just more of um, an intuitive energy. It's more of a, I would say, feminine vibration. You know, it's more of what's hidden, has to do with the hidden realms. And, you know, I just, I'm there. I love those kind of realms. So the dark has always appealed to me. I'm more of a night owl. I'm more of a dream moon, moon energy. You know, if you if you think dark is evil, then you think the moon is evil. So it's going to be a little bit hard for those who still don't understand quite what light and dark is because Scorpio is one of the most pure signs. I've always said that about Scorpio. Scorpio is all about what's pure, right? What's raw. What hasn't been tampered with, you know, just come as you are kind of energy. Like, let's see it. Let's see your darkness. Scorpio rules secrets and hidden you know, things that are hidden, things that are under the surface. And right now, there is a very secretive energy in our universe. I think the universe is up to something, quite frankly. A lot of unknown energy coming up from the surface. I've been doing a lot of reflecting on this energy, and I very much think that the new moon in Scorpio is the real Halloween. You know, we talk about the veil being thin and, you know, spirits being able to cross over. I've been thinking a lot about the veil and how I don't even really think, I think after Halloween, I, I never thought about this before, but it seems as if the veil just disappears. You know, it doesn't just thin and come back. It just thins and goes away for a while, right on, right in Scorpio season. So that's not a coincidence. So guys, this is a time to set intention for what you want to see transform. The thing about Scorpio energy is that it's so deep and it's such a hidden realm in our universe that really strange things happen there. You know, things die there. Things become reborn there. Scorpio is also the phoenix. You know, everyone says Scorpio is the scorpion, you know. They can sting you. They can poison you. Yeah, they can. But they can also rise above the ways that they're dying. Okay, so things that are no longer serving us or things that no longer align with us, those, those things right now are kind of becoming ash. And the good thing about Scorpio is that everything that dies also becomes reborn. So now would be a really brilliant time to reflect on the things inside of ourselves, you know, our inner world. Not necessarily physical things that we can see and touch, but what we can feel emotionally. This is an emotionally purging time. And, you know, I, I look up here, guys, because I just, I noticed in one of my last videos as I was rewatching the messages that I look up here a lot. I don't really look at you guys. And this is because I'm just thinking and talking, so... If you're curious, my window is up here, and I'm not really looking at anything. I'm just kind of channeling. These energies kind of just take me away, especially this deep Scorpio energy. It's, it's really interesting, but as I was saying, it's a really, really great time to reflect on, you know, what no longer has life. The, the death and life process, you know, I know we have this whole free will thing, but it seems as if death is the only promised occasion to all of us. Like, death will meet us all, right? None of us are getting out of this alive. So we kind of have, there's kind of a lack of control that Scorpio energy brings to the surface, which is why Scorpio focuses so much on power. Power and control are different energies, if you really think about it. So we can focus on our personal power that we can gain by kind of surrendering and releasing control of these issues. And what I'm trying to say is that we cannot control life and death. So if you just took a minute around this time to really feel what has life right now 
in your experience, in your journey, you'll very easily, if you just get into that quiet space, and if you focus on the essence of life and the essence of death, right, you'll be able to decipher the people, the places, and the things in your life that are either alive and have vitality and vibrance, or they're withering away, almost like the leaves. You know, this is a very beautiful process. It's like the fall energy. Another thing about Scorpio energy is that it's the house of equal opportunities. Um, you know, Scorpio, it, it gets more of that rap for death and transformation and all those secret hidden energies. But Scorpio is the opposite of Taurus. Taurus is my resources. Scorpio is our resources. So this is the house of shared resources, you guys. So for any of any of us who are in situations where our resources are overly shared, if there's any Scorpios watching, um, you know, I often mention to Scorpio how their resources are just automatically shared with other people. Every Scorpio in my life, um, as I think about who they are as a person, it's like they help out a lot. And it's not even that they're helping out. It's just that what's theirs is, is others, kind of. So this is a great time to set new intention um, for that to change, you know, what's shared and what isn't. Scorpio is, is that kind of energy. It's because it's the house of death. Death is a shared resource for everyone, right? Tran everyone has to transform. So as far as Scorpio energy and this new moon's energy, it's about what is shared amongst us, kind of. The resources that, that are shared between us and other people. So it's the equal opportunity house, the shared resources house. I just wanted to mention that. To me, the moon, the moon's energy, we are talking about the moon. We are talking about the eighth house, talking about all these things. The moon is our subconscious in astrology. It's our dream state, you know, what's under the surface. It's our emotion. It's our soul. So to me, this is like the dark night of the soul. The soul becomes hidden and dark when there's a new moon every month. Okay, and right now there's certain secrets that our souls are dwelling under, you know, subconscious secrets. And as I mentioned, yes, the the moon it really does remind me of the real Halloween. This this energy, like this is the real uh, All Hallows Eve energy. So, all of these things being taken into consideration, one of the main questions I have for you guys that you might want to ask yourself during this Scorpio new moon is what do you want to kill? What do you want to die? What in your life no longer has vibrance? What is no longer alive for you? Because that is what needs to crumble to ash. What do you want to resurrect? Scorpio energy is, is definitely a resurrecting energy. It's definitely kind of a purging energy it's like that awakening uh judgment card i have that here i have the death card here the judgment card the king of cups and the tower those were all energies that kind of spoke to me um shout out to the peace dealer uh he had a really amazing ceremony for this new moon um so that's what i did for the new moon in scorpio i took part in that so for those of you who are wondering, you know, what can I do? Because this kind of energy, it's so potent. And I don't know if it's just me, but I always wonder, like, like what can I do with this energy? It's going to come and pass. You know, it's going to come and pass. So um, as I mentioned, I do the new moon spiritual burning, where every new moon, I've been doing this for over a year now, and it, it works. So whatever you write down on the piece of paper, it, it burns on the full moon. So I'm going to write down my new moon. I haven't done it yet. New moon in Scorpio intentions. And then I will be burning that piece of paper on the full moon in Gemini later on in this month. It's around like the 24th or something like that. Um, so it's just a symbol. It's a sacred symbol of, you know, what we're releasing. And that, that kind of reminds me of the whole sacrifice energy that Scorpio works with too. You know, in order to be reborn, you do have to sacrifice your old shell, your old skin, your old life. So there is, this is not without sacrifice, guys. There is, there is a sacrificing energy. So we are sacrificing and purging old habits, old ways, our old life. So you want to ask yourself what you're willing to sacrifice at this time as well. Um, so yeah, that that's some good ideas to do. Um, 
if, if you don't do anything at all, just, just reflect on what it is that you want to die in your life, what it is that you want to resurrect. Also, um, I, I worked with, you know, death, things that are dying. I have these leaves here. These leaves have just been sitting here on my, kind of my altar here. So if you want to pick some leaves up from outside, that's a great energy. And I just want to mention um, the spiritual burning that you do for the Scorpio new moon is going to be really potent because Scorpio is that phoenix. So keep in mind, um, whatever you write down, whatever you're setting intention for, Scorpio always rises from the ashes. So this could be the time of year where things that are not truly dead, things that have been in a false grave, could rise up and have life again like the judgment card that i have here people rising out of the grave because of the call that they're hearing this is the time of year where we're awakened and we're, we're called okay so yeah guys uh it is that time and i'm not i just wanted to mention this briefly before i get into the messages um for tarot um i'm not sure if any of you guys have been watching that new um sabrina the chilling adventures of sabrina on netflix I finished the series last night, and I'm, I don't, like, spoiler, spoiler alert here, you know, if you guys are watching, it's not really a spoiler, though, um, so sorry if any of you guys are watching, but it just seemed too coincidental not to mention. Last night, I finished the series, and it was during this, like, I feel like last night, like, the, the night of the November 6th was really potent, because that's when the moon was reaching Scorpio, and in Michigan, the new moon happened around, like, 8 a.m., 9 a.m., I think, maybe 10, 11 for some of us. Um, I was asleep. This whole, this energy has been insane. It's been very, very insane, and um, I've just kind of been going with it and sleeping a lot, honestly, but I thought it was really, really ironic I reached the part of the the last episode, the last episode of this uh, Sabrina, Chilling Adventures of Sabrina on Netflix had a lot to do with death. Um, it was really weird to see, like I, I really took that as a message from the universe because, you know, death is an angel. The angel of death was coming to this, this town, Greendale is what they call it, and um, I just thought it was really significant that the whole death energy, um, I guess you guys will just have to watch it, but it was a very Scorpio energy, a very, very Scorpio energy. I'd have to watch the episode again and take notes. Um, it, my thoughts when I was watching it were really insane, like, wow, this is reminding me of Scorpio. This is reminding me of Scorpio energy. Um, a lot of that show reminds me, oh, I know what my main thought was. There was this garden um, in, this, in this show, and it was the garden of Cain and Abel. So the soil um, was very enriched with the energies of Cain and Abel, I believe. It's the, the Garden of Cain. So the thing about this garden in this show is that the, the soil was, excuse me, really rich. And whatever is buried in that garden will come back to life. Um, so even people, okay, they would, they would come back to life. There was a lot of that in, this, in this, the last few episodes of this Netflix show that I'm watching it just so happened that I reached these episodes around the Scorpio new moon so it was really symbolic to me this whole death and things that um, are dead should stay dead but bringing people back to life necromancy energy I've had dreams about necromancy um, it's, it's a really crazy time guys but the whole meaning behind my mentioning this cane garden is that you know new moons become seeds and I really feel that whatever we're planting in the ground right now with this Scorpio energy, it will rise. <laughs> it will awaken. So just be very crystal clear about your intentions, you guys. Especially if you're taking part in any kind of spiritual burnings. Because the ash is very symbolic in Scorpio season. So what will you plant in your garden of resurrection? What will you plant in... What seeds of intention are you planting, right? So it brings me back to those two questions. What do you want to die? What do you want to resurrect? Because that is ultimately the sacrifice that's going to take place in between those two things, if you know what I mean. So without further ado, I am going to get started on the tarot messages. Um... I'm going to be using... The wisdom of the house of night you guys because it just seems ooh, these are cold they're sitting on my window it just seems as if these these cards are 
really soothing for the energy. So this is just going to be a message. I have the moon card here. I like to shuffle before I start. Um, this is just going to be... You can take this message however you guys want, um, but I'm setting the intent, this new moon intent, that the messages that come out for all 12 signs have something to do with what is dying, what is releasing, what is being reborn, what should we transform, you know, um, what should we set our intent. This is a new moon message, okay, so whatever card comes out, it's going to have something to do with what's transforming, okay, and I'll try to keep that in mind as I'm going through the signs. <clears throat> but we are going to start with Aries. Aries, this is happening in your 8th house. Um, so this is your 8th house. Your energies are always on point. So transformation, death, rebirth, shared opportunities, shared resources. So let's see what this new moon message in Scorpio is for Aries. What is the Scorpio new moon message? for the zodiac sign Aries sun moon or rising Aries spirit will you please give me a message for the zodiac sign of Aries for the new moon in Scorpio new moon in Scorpio message for Aries please new moon in Scorpio message for Aries alright Aries we have the card beauty beauty so this is a beautiful new moon for you Aries this is a beautiful transformation and it very much reminds me um, what I'm seeing in my head um, this is black and white recording um, but to me it's almost as a, a black rose and how a black rose is just as beautiful or if not more beautiful than a regular red rose or whatever so even when this is like I keep seeing in my head honestly Aries a rose that has withered and died in the, in the beauty in that just like kind of have the leaves that I have here how I mean I was looking at these leaves up close the veins and everything like that um, and it was just really trippy and I think I think this is like reminding me of pretty little dead things um, how there is beauty in death there is beauty in this process for you Aries you guys are all going through your own you know journey with these energies okay so there's a hidden beauty here Aries this is the card 40 so 40 is the number 4 4 plus 0 is 4 so when it comes to numerology this is talking about emotion this is talking about cancer energy for some of you this is talking about um, your foundation you know, every everything needs a foundation to grow. You know, this rose was once a, once a seed. It needed water. It needed light. So there could be something in your life right now, Aries, that is needing water. You know, watering beauty, um, watering this transformation. But I am definitely seeing something here about a withered rose. So whatever that means, I'm just going to read intuitively, intuitively. I do see that. So what is dying for you, Aries? What is being reborn? Something beautiful. Something beautiful. Beauty is not skin deep, for sure, when it comes to this energy. Because our skin and our vessels, that's going to be what withers away and dies and becomes worm food. Okay, so this is you're, you're really learning about true beauty, Aries. That is becoming reborn. And the, the very simple message here is that, you know, this is a beautiful process. And um, this is setting new intention for this beauty. Okay, whatever beauty means to you. This could be talking about Venus energy, which is in your seventh house right now, retrograding. So maybe something significant will happen on the new moon. I'm sorry, on the 16th when Venus goes direct. And then we at the bottom of the deck, we do have risk. Okay, and now that has revealed the trapped card. So some of you guys are really wanting to take a risk and jump out of a situation that makes you feel trapped, okay? This is a temporary prison. Some of you guys are, are taking a risk to bust out of jail. But I did want to mention here that we have another indication of four, okay? So maybe something about the 31st or maybe the end of November is when you take this risk. And this is a beautiful risk. But we do have a strong indication here about your foundation, Aries, just like this woman has reached the edge of her foundation. So maybe you're risking something, maybe you're taking a risk for something beautiful, okay? 
a beautiful risk for you, Aries. So hopefully that helps. Let's move on to Taurus energy. Taurus, this is a special time for you because Scorpio is your opposite sign. So this is your seventh house. It has everything to do with your relationships and your partnerships, even your marriages. Uh, this is the house of unification. All right. So this doesn't have, it's not that it doesn't have anything to do with you, but the seventh house is the opposite of our first house. So the first house is all about self. The seventh house is all about us. Okay, <clears throat> so this is your relationships, Taurus. Beautiful time to set new intention for the relationships, all relationships, not just romantic or love, um, but, you know, the relationships we have with family, the relationships you have with your children, co-workers, all relationships, even the relationship you have with yourself, Taurus. So this is a, a time for newness to be set for relationships, so let's see what the new moon and Scorpio message is for Taurus. Let's get one card for Taurus, please. For the Scorpio new moon. New moon and Scorpio message for Taurus. Okay, I had a funny feeling that two would come out for you, Taurus. Okay, very interesting. Very, very interesting. The first card out we have is Fragments fragments this is one of my favorite cards in this deck because it comes out for me all the time um now we have the 15 here this could have to do with the 15th of november for some of you or maybe six one plus five is six maybe you're dealing with a virgo maybe it has to do with your lifestyle taurus but this energy is talking about everything um, being in pieces, kind of. How sometimes we can feel like things are just all over the place. Like some kind of huge puzzle that you don't have all the pieces to. And that is very Scorpio energy, you know. Very Scorpio energy is some kind of puzzle. Scorpios are very mysterious. So how are you dealing with that energy, Taurus? You may be feeling a little bit spirited away is what i just heard because i always see the the woman here on this card she's like a spirit and she is surrounded in earth so there's the spirit of earth here taurus coming up and um i feel like you are rising okay you may not feel very grounded around this time i mean how could you you know like this is a water energy is very very deep and emotional okay taurus so it might not be the easiest to ground right now so you might not feel really steady and stable and sturdy um with your lifestyle right now or where you live or in your marriages and your relationship we can't forget that this is all talking about relationships so when it comes to relationships for Taurus right now they're feeling a little bit fragmented they're feeling like there's pieces of this like my job is one thing my family is another thing that's what this card talks about everything feeling a little bit scattered and all over but I do want to mention that in the eyes of spirit you are always whole Taurus so you may feel physically scattered or mentally scattered or even spiritually scattered, but in some realm, in some way, in the eyes of goddess, in the eyes of source, you are always whole. So please keep that in mind because not feeling whole can sometimes really scare Taurus. Like, where are all my things? You know, where are all my things? That's what I'm hearing. Like, what is all, where are all my, where's all my stuff, you know? Like, where are, where are the things that belong to me? And it's interesting that that's coming up because you are the house of resources. So you could very much feel like your money is scattered or your resources are scattered, perhaps because they're in the hands of others. Because Scorpio brings out that, well, let's share these resources. And Taurus is like, um, what's mine is mine and I'll decide what I share. And this is coming up in relationships. Okay. But anyways, um, so yeah, in my environment right now, there's a little bit of hostility that just rolls out. I'm not sure if you guys can hear that. So there could even be certain arguments. Everything's a sign for me, Taurus. Um, there could be certain arguments that have happened um, around this Scorpio season. But either way, Taurus, this new moon is a beautiful time to set intent for transformation to take place in your relationships. Especially if you're, you know, it could be interesting when things come up in our relationship house our seventh house of relationships that's when we undergo a lot of changes so ever since the sun has entered scorpio you could have become aware of certain things in your relationship but what i just did is i just remained calm and i, I let people act how they act and and that does not affect me right 
So maybe that'll help you, Taurus, if you're feeling a little bit fragmented. We had a, a couple of two interesting cards come out um, for this new moon for you. So what's, what's transforming, Taurus? What should die? What should become reborn? It has to do with all the little pieces of you. So you're not only going through a rebirth, but you're going through the different pieces of you transforming Taurus. So welcome to being the opposite sign of Scorpio. Not only are you not like transforming as a whole, like there's the, you become dissected in Scorpio season, I'm feeling. In these little, everything that you own, all these things that, all your things, Taurus, where are all my things? Well, Taurus, they're in the underworld and they're becoming transformed in more, they're, they're realigning with a, a truer form of beauty. And the card that came out with Fragmented is Rigid. So these are two of the most interesting cards to come out, Taurus. Rigid Fragment. Okay, so Rigid talks about the walls that we've put up, right? We see this crow here, and he's on this uh, wall of rocks, but we have some light in the background there. So this is talking about the walls that have either been placed against you, Taurus, by other people, or you have this wall up. This is the walls we build up against people in a defense, right? So because of this, Taurus, because of you not feeling grounded, because of you feeling a little bit on the defense, yeah, you're protecting yourself a little bit. But just be careful of the walls because this wall could be coming crumbling down. This could be what's transforming. We have the 30. So maybe there's just a little bit of uh, rigid communication. When somebody's rigid, they're just really defensive. and like. So that's either you or someone else, Taurus. I'm a Taurus moon, so I definitely understand this energy. I have been feeling very rigid and very much scattered in, in a bunch of pieces. So this could be what's dying for you, Taurus. It depends on how you're interpreting this message. But I just feel like ultimately this is a time to set um, especially emotional intent. There's a lot of emotional cycles right now and we do have the number four. So some of you could be dealing with a Cancer, a Pisces, or a Scorpio because we have the High Priestess of Water. But this could be what you're embodying too with this, this new moon Scorpio. I'm sorry, <laughs> Taurus. This new moon in Scorpio, Taurus. The cycles of your emotion and how you can still ground yourself in this spiritual energy. How can you still stay dedicated right and loyal to these energies even though your foundation is kind of you know you know there's just some things going on with it Taurus why would why else would you be ascending up into the air so you know this could be uh the end to some certain relationships especially if they make you feel fragmented or rigid so hopefully that helps Taurus sorry there's a little bit of distraction during um your video just to be honest with you there's someone in the other room like arguing and yelling so maybe there's some arguing and yelling going on for you Taurus just, uh, you know, gather up the pieces of yourself and protect yourself is, is what my, my message is. But be careful of uh, walls that you've built up for emotional protection. All right. But this is a cycle. OK, so Taurus, you just had that full moon. So just do whatever you feel necessary, because this is not an easy energy for Taurus. I mean, I can feel it. Um, I can feel the main thing here is that you're not feeling grounded in your relationships. So how does a Taurus proceed? So hopefully that helps you, Taurus. Let's move on to Gemini. Gemini, Scorpio is your sixth house of lifestyle. Okay, so this has everything to do with the services that you offer other people. It has everything to do with how you live, your day-to-day -day routine. So that's why that's always changing for you, Gemini, because Scorpio is a very transforming energy. So your lifestyle could be transforming around this time. And if not, this is the new moon where you, if you have anything in your life that you want to change, if you want anything about your life to die, if you want anything um, in your life to become reborn or to resurrect a new lifestyle for yourself, this is the new moon to do that, Gemini. So this is all about how you're living in your job as well. If you want a certain job to die, if you want to resurrect a job from the past, something like that, Gemini, this is the time to do it. This is a very interesting house for you because the house of lifestyle is always the house of life for me, Gemini, and your house of life is ruled by death. So very interesting. Um, so I'm not sure if I'm going to take these cards because I just wasn't really focusing, but we do have listening and we have the high priestess of spirit and wishing. So some of you just need to listen to spirit um, and maybe there's a wish here, a spiritual wish coming up that you need to listen to. And we do have strength. So some of you could be dealing with Leo or maybe you're just, um, you know, focusing on your own strength, uh, your roots. But let's really focus here. Get through this interference. Call on spirit to remove that interference, please. 
and let's get a, a card for Gemini. Just one card, Spirit. Okay, wow. Gemini, as I focus on your energy, we have the card Lust come out. So it's really interesting that we're talking about lifestyle. Because when this card comes up in my personal readings, I always say that the 24 there equals 6, right? You're going through 6th house energy. So this always brings me to talk about a lust for life. So Gemini, maybe you guys are just wanting to get, this is the card of obsession. This is the card of uh, hidden agendas. It asks you to evaluate why you desire what you desire, Gemini. So this could be a lustful connection. I mean, it is Scorpio season. This is all about intimacy. I don't even know if I mentioned that, but Scorpio is a very intimate sign. So this is about getting more intimate um, with your routine, Gemini. This is a very interesting message to come out, but it is the 24. So maybe you want to look out for any connections that happen around November 24th, Gemini. It could be very lustful. Just be careful um, that this is not um, an obsessive energy, but you know, honestly, my guides are like encouraging that. <laughs> So, I don't know, Gemini, are you having, is there a lust for life with the 24, 4 plus 2 is 6? You know, maybe you just need to enjoy your life a little bit more, add a little bit more passion into your life. You know, have you had sex lately, Gemini? Because I'm just feeling, um, oh, I don't know, just an energy of, like, you need to or something. You know, maybe you just need to release, um, add a little bit of this sexy into your life. You know what I mean, Gemini? Now, um, for help, we do have uh, at the bottom of the deck success. So there's something here that's successful about your lifestyle, Gemini. Um, maybe this new moon is a time to plant new seeds of in, of success. Um, intention for success is what I was going to say. Um, but yeah, there's some kind of successful lust or something like that. But you know, Gemini, I just feel all, all around that this is going to be a successful moon, okay? We have the moon and success. So this is going to be a successful moon for you for some reason. It may even add a little bit of lust. It, it looks like you've got success. You've got some kind of, maybe this is a hidden success that comes to the surface and may have something to do with some kind of message about a risk because we have message and risk here. Bottom of the deck was success though, so I just want you to keep that in mind that this could really be um, the time where you can set seeds of success, okay? By the end of the month, these seeds could come to fruition, but the card that came out for you, Gemini, is lust. So for those of you who are coupled, um, in relationships, you know, or maybe you're just dating around, I don't know, but there's a lust energy here available for you, Gemini. You know, the next full moon is in your sign, so maybe that's why the moon card, maybe you're dealing with a Pisces could be dealing with um an aries as well because we have the fool okay the risk card so that reminds me of aries pisces so that's um that's the the first sign and the last sign so there's something here about a cycle for you gemini coming to completion especially at the end of the month when that new moon in gemini comes up so just keep a lookout for that, Gemini, because there's certain uh, cycles of success coming to completion for you and new things coming. But you guys are going to have to let me know what this lust card is about, all right? Um, but my cards don't lie, and this card is coming out, so maybe you're just feeling a little bit more lusty. You know, um, it's going to depend on all of you. You guys are all different, so whether this is good or bad, that's up to you to decide. To me, I'm just reading the card, and it is, I think some of you guys just need to add more passion into your life you may meet someone because of this new moon in scorpio now this is all about setting new intent so maybe this is something that some of you guys are killing because remember these cards have everything to do with what it with dying what do you want to kill gemini what do you want to resurrect some of you are resurrecting a lustful connection some of you guys are killing lust it depends on what you've been going through you all have a different moon and rising sign so you might want to watch those to get a better indication of where where this fits in for you right now but um, this is setting new intention, and this is what's transforming. So if some of you have been abstinent for a while, haven't really connected in a sexual way, this might be the changing of that. If you guys have been doing a lot of connecting, you know, a lot of lust energy, maybe that's what's dying. So it depends, but we do have lust. So very, very interesting card. It'll be interesting if anyone else gets that card. Just keep in mind that we do have an underlying energy of success. So whether you're killing lust or re uh, resurrecting lust, you will be successful. So hopefully that helped Gemini. Let's move on to Cancer. Cancer, feel that North Node yet? North Node and Cancer now. Now, Cancer, you're a water sign too. So this energy um, is probably right at home for you. You know, Scorpio water, it can be a little bit lukewarm. It's different. It's fiery. But for you, Cancer, you know, this is your fifth house. 
So Scorpio represents the house of romance for you. This represents the house of happiness and fun. Um, the house of children even. I love fifth house energy. It's very, every time I read for signs going through fifth house energy, I'm like, oh, they're fine. You know, but maybe you're not um, all the way fine, Cancer, especially on the romance tip. Some of you could be dealing with a little bit of sadness because this is the house of death. So the perhaps the death to certain romance, death to certain soulmates. Um, transformation when it comes to all these these things so let's focus here and get you a card and then we'll talk more about how this energy could be playing out for you let's get a um, full moon I'm sorry new moon okay now cancer I do want to mention you're ruled by the moon okay and now that you're the the north node all of the eclipses are gonna start um, being in cancer and Capricorn okay very suitingly, we have the card invisible. I figured this card would come up for some of us because this is a very invisible energy. So Cancer, um, you're really using this hidden secret of uh, these depths, this new moon for you. Maybe you're maybe you're being asked by spirit to stay in the shadows a little bit. You know, maybe not reveal so much about yourself because this invisible card says that. It says maybe you should observe from the shadows before, you know, making yourself seen. Cancer, maybe you're just invisible. You know, I haven't really talked to any of my cancer friends lately. So you're just using this time of Scorpio to really hide yourself. Maybe you're in a different realm, you know, the hidden realms of the universe, but this is invisible. So just keep in mind that um, you do have the invisibility cloak around this new moon, Cancer. So there are certain things that you can see that others can't see. There are certain things you can do without being seen, Cancer. So as far as the message here, it is the 16. Wow. You're going through... Oh, you're going through fifth house energy. But the 1 plus 6 is 7. That's still relationships. And you do have a lot of energy in your seventh house of Capricorn. So... Uh, Saturn is there, Pluto is still there, and now the, the south node is there. So you're going to be releasing a lot of karmic partnerships. You're going to be um, releasing a lot of, like, things that need to die. Okay, you've got Pluto in your seventh house. And uh, Scorpio is your fifth house of soulmate romance. So relationships, romance, they kind of go hand in hand. So maybe you're feeling a little bit invisible in some of your relationships, Cancer. Maybe you guys are feeling a little bit hidden. Maybe there's some secrets or something like that going on on behalf of you or someone else. But there could also be a secret admirer, Cancer, with this invisible romance. That could be a secret admirer. But this is time to set intention um, for romance, for happiness. Um, this is the house of expression. So maybe you guys are just expressing yourself in a very hidden way, which is so Cancer because a lot of people don't really know how to decipher between the, the emotions of cancer because you guys are, are hermit crabs. So you're very used to this hidden energy too. You have a shell that you can go hide in as a crab. So I'm not sure cancer, this is, this is invisible. So just keep in mind that this, these shadowy realms, this new moon, you're ruled by the moon. So this is very time of hidden. This is a time to stay in the shadows, maybe not reveal so much cancer because you're like in a different realm. You know, you're seeing things and, you know, you're you're ruled by the moon. I keep saying that. So you being ruled by the moon right now is very important because, be, like, because of that, you do have a lot of um, hidden knowledge, okay, that you that you have, Cancer. You, you know certain things about the emotional realms that other people don't. And this is talking about your relationships. It's talking about some kind of partnership. Maybe you have a relationship right now with the invisible. Bottom of the deck is focus. And we have the 17. So this is 16 and 17. That's a synchronicity there, Cancer. So maybe the 16th and the 17th of this month is really important. Um, but you're also focused on something right now that's invisible to other people. You see that? How Now you could be dealing with a Sagittarius. Um, but this is 16 and 17. That is a synchronicity. So perhaps you come out of the shadows to focus on something. Or maybe you're focusing on something that others can't see. Focus on the unseen, this new moon, Cancer, especially when it comes to your own happiness, the way you're expressing yourself, but this is an interesting message. Pay attention to the 16th and the 17th of this month, because there could be something invisible that you actually shoot. Like, if there's anything harder than hitting the target in the center, it's hitting a target in the center when you can't see. So you could be taking a stab in the dark, if you know what I mean, okay? You're really trusting your intuition. To me, this is trusting your intuition for accuracy. Cancer, you would be the one that could still hit the bullseye, even though it's dark, even though you can't see. So this is being able to focus in the dark. Don't allow these dark times or these shadows to, 
you know, influence you to like not see because you can cancer. You're a water sign. You're a cardinal water sign. So this is all about invisible focus, focusing on what you can't see. But you know your intuition, Cancer. So there is a reminder here not to forget about, you know, the things that you've already seen. Just because things are temporarily invisible or hidden right now, trust that intuition, Cancer. That was a really beautiful message for you guys. Remember to apply that to what's transforming. You know, maybe your focus is transforming. Maybe your focus is what you're killing so that you can focus on something else that's unseen. So take that as you will, Cancer, but you guys need to listen to your emotional intuition on that. I feel that that was very, very, very important. So we're going to move on to Leo now. Leo, you are finally off the hook. You guys probably don't know it, but for the last 19 months... You guys have been the north, the north node of karma. So you've been bound to karma. You can go back to your like life now as this north node moved more into Cancer and leaves you alone. But this is your fourth house, Leo. Cancer is your, I'm sorry, not Cancer. Cancer is the fourth house, but Scorpio is your fourth house. So the fourth house is very emotional. It's all about family. It's about roots. It's about your home. Um... And the fourth house does square you, okay? So whenever we're talking about fourth house energy, um, the fourth house from our sun or our rising, it like squares us. So squares are kind of difficult sometimes. This could be the, the time where certain conflicts or um, the need to compromise resurfaces. Now this is a new moon though, okay? So this is intention. You can set the intention for compromise or, you know, for less conflict in your life. But it has everything to do with your family and your roots and your home life. So setting new intention for that. What do you want to transform about your family? What do you want to transform about your home? About your foundation? About where you're from, Leo? Your roots, okay? And very, very, very accurately, we have the High Priestess of Water coming out, which is that number four up there. So you're going through fourth house energy. Lots of emotion. Could be dealing with a Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio with this High Priestess of Water. But this does talk about things changing, Leo. Water is a very changeable element. You can pour it into different containers. So keep that in mind when it comes to the transformation and the death and the rebirth of your family, of your roots, of your home. Fourth house to me is home. It's all about home. It could even be about the mother's energy. So maybe you're feeling a bit emotional around this time with this fourth house energy when it comes to family, when it comes to home or roots or foundation, moving perhaps. Now this is a new moon, so this is all about the intent, okay? So if any of you guys want to see changes happen in your home or in your family or in your roots, things like that, then this is the time to set intention. There could be certain things about your home that are becoming reborn. Maybe you're um, moving back to a home that you, that you haven't been in. Maybe your home is just going through transformation right now. So it could look like a tornado has went off into that home right now, Leo. But um, the good thing about that is when the storm passes, you can set the intent for whatever changes you'd like to see in that home of yours. So it depends on where you guys are all at independently. You know, if you want to move, great time to set the intention to move at the end of the month. Um, if there's anything about your family that you'd like to transform. So, you know, Leo, this is all about that energy for you. And it's about your emotion as well. So you can take this high priestess of water and kind of um, take take the energy of adaption with it. You know, being able to adapt, excuse me, especially if you are changing homes right now, moving can be so stressful. So yeah, Leo, this is this is the high priestess of water. So keep in mind that water can be ice, water can be snow, water can be rain. So there's many different forms that this this water can come in. And it's talking about being changeable right now. You know, your emotions can be changing a lot right now too, Leo, with all these things going on. The north node just shifting, this energy squaring you. So you may need to compromise emotionally when it comes to family matters right now or home. Um, but just keep in mind that you have the ability to, to kill certain emotions right now, to resurrect even certain emotions in relation to family and home. Bottom of the deck is complicated. Complicated. So, Leo, there are some complicated emotions going on here with you during this new moon. Hmm. Some emotional confliction, some emotional complication going on. Maybe this has to do with a home environment. Maybe it has to do with a family member. But keep in mind, Leo, this is something that you can transform right now. This is something that you can kill and resurrect, right? And then we have this risk, okay, Leo? So you may be risking loyalty. 
all right we have loyalty and risk so you guys might be risking something right now and that might be why there's some emotional complication but just keep in mind leo that these emotions are fluid especially if you're dealing with a water sign you know you'll you'll be able to know that they change emotions a lot you know we, we just swim in these deep realms so keep that in mind during this fourth house transit and if i were you i would just find I would focus on the energy of home, not necessarily where you live physically, but even if it's thinking about your grandma's house or like some some energy that feels like home to you, even if you make it up in your head, it's very important that you're feeling that home energy and that you're setting new intention for that, that home energy, that family, right? Your soul tribe, your soul family, Leo. Just keep in mind that it squares you, so there may be some compromises that come up emotionally, stuff like that. So let's move along to Virgo. Virgo, we almost had love come out for you. Virgo, this is your third house. Scorpio is your third house. So it's really interesting that Scorpio is so secretive. And it rules all these uh, secrets and, and hidden energy. Excuse me, my, my window's open. My nose is starting to run. But um, yeah, Virgo, this is why Virgo is either silent or talking a lot. Because you guys, your communication, the way you communicate is ruled by Scorpio. So Virgos communicate in very intense ways because of that. This has, this has everything to do with the way that you talk, Virgo, the way that you speak. I knew that card would come out for you. So Virgo, what is it about the way you communicate that you would like to change, that you would like to transform? This is the perfect time to do that. Um, third house energy is also the short distance travel house so you could be traveling like maybe 30 minutes to an hour away during this time um, or during Scorpio season in general so you guys may even be doing some short distance traveling um, to communicate all forms of communication right singing speech giving speeches even just traveling to conversate with someone you may have to travel a little bit to conversate with someone um, but this is all about the way you communicate, Virgo. So some of you may want to resurrect communication with someone. Maybe there's someone from your past that you'd like to communicate with. Or maybe there's just something about the way that you communicate with yourself that you want to change. Now we do have the moon card coming out here, Virgo. And this is the card number 50. So it's the card 5. So this reminds me of a soulmate energy, always, because I have the moon and then I have 5. So that's like soulmate energy. Maybe cancer energy, maybe a Pisces energy. But this is talking about hidden communication, Virgo. When you get the moon, now this is the moon, the new moon, the full moon. So this moon here, this is spiritual. So you may want to communicate in a, in a spiritual way, in an emotional way. Communicate from your soul around this time, Virgo. Um, this is definitely secret communication, though. You guys could be communicating with this black cat. You could be communicating with um, whatever you believe is a higher power. But I feel like there's some definitely some communication going on behind the scenes, Virgo. And that can be interpreted in many different ways, but I almost feel like this is a hush-hush energy. To have Scorpio as a third house, that's like, shh, don't, don't tell, don't, don't tell. You know, like, maybe there's some secrets here, Virgo, that this new moon in Scorpio is bringing up for you. You could be um, withholding information, okay? You may know something, you may be thinking something, but you're not communicating it. And that makes sense because Scorpio is your third house. Now, this is all about transformation and setting um, in seeds of intention. So maybe you're just being very secretive like Cancer is. Maybe you're just being um, more of the, the hidden, communicating in more hidden ways. So like sign language energy, I'm feeling like Braille almost. Like you can't see it, but you can interpret it. So you're interpreting something really dark uh, and hidden, Virgo. Most people don't know you're doing this. Um, so what are you, what is transforming? Um, some kind of secret. This is all a secret for Virgo. Um, what's transforming around this time and what's the light flicker? Mm -hmm. um, and what's, what's resurrecting? Some kind of secret. Something from a soul level. So lots of different interpretations here, Virgo. But this is about your hidden happiness. It's about some kind of hidden joy or romance. And this is all about communication and short distance travel. You guys could even travel somewhere in secret wow interesting um and then the bottom of the deck is confidence and belonging 41 and 42 just like cancer some of you guys are really aligning with cancer energy because they had the 16 and the 17 now you guys have 41 and 42 virgo so you belong 
um, in a confident place. This is belonging and confidence. Having the confidence to know where you belong with this new moon um, and having knowing that you belong in confidence, right? You don't belong in insecurity. Scorpio energy, now there is some complication here, some emotional complication just like uh, Leo, and then the need to be honest about that, okay? So communication is coming up for you, Virgo, because we have honesty in the high priestess of air. So this is, talk about communication here. We have a lot of communication, honest communication. You need to be honest about something, okay? But you're being very secretive. I see all these secretive energies and conflict emotionally no wonder the moon came out for you but belonging in confidence right belonging in confidence having the confidence to know where you belong and where like you know what you don't belong whether it's a person place or thing you just don't belong there anymore and you're probably doing some communicating about this virgo doing some um communi honest communication is coming up especially if you're dealing with a pisces cancer scorpio or a gemini libra aquarius the high priestess of air came up for you so this moon, you know, it's hiding a lot under the surface, Virgo. That's probably what you're doing. But keep in mind, this Scorpio energy is all about purging. It's like a throw up energy. So you may have word vomit around this time. Like you've held something in for so long that it just like it just blurts out at someone. But um, just be honest about your emotions and about what you're conflicted about. Um, be, be honest, Virgo, um, if you do op open your mouth to speak around this time. Scorpio season is all about the way you communicate. So I'll leave that for you guys to decipher because it seems like it's being very hidden by the moon. And, and I respect hidden energy. So you may be, may be keeping some secrets right now, Virgo, or maybe you're telling some secrets. You're finally being honest about some secrets. So let's move on to Libra. Libra, you are the second, I'm sorry, you're going through second house energy. Okay, you're going through second house energy with this Scorpio. So you had a new moon last month, and now the moon has moved from your first house to your second house. So this has everything to do with your personal resources, your finances, Libra. So um, if you want anything to transform at a financial level for you right now, um, that's a perfect time to set the intent for new finances to come in. If there's anything about your finances that you'd like to kill, especially, you know, if you're overly sharing finances with another person or something like that, uh, this is a time to really set seeds of intent to break free financially, maybe a new job, maybe a new career, um, any resources that you want to transform to come in right now, because the second house is everything that you value. It's the house of finances. Okay. So value is transforming for you right now, Libra. And maybe you're trying to resurrect certain values. Interestingly enough, we have the high priestess of fire coming out. A lot of us are getting priestesses. So you guys might be dealing with an unhappy fire sign. Okay, this is an Aries Sagittarius Leo coming up in the reverse. So maybe there's matters of money that's kind of, you know, maybe there's a fire sign involved somehow that, that's not very happy. Maybe this is a fire sign from the past coming back. But for those of you who are not dealing with Aries, Sagittarius, Leo energy, this is, um, you know, Libra. This is like a lack of passion, okay? The High Priestess of Fire in reverse. Uh, she's red. I know you can't see because it's black and white, but she's red and crimson. And this is like the fire energy of Scorpio coming out, that Mars energy. This is like your light staying lit. But, you know, Libra, you guys might be feeling very financially exhausted right now, like... Maybe you're feeling like some of your resources are like losing flame or something like that. Like you're, this is like a lack of energy, like a lack of passion. Um, I got this message for Libra before with the Ace of Wands in reverse. So Libra is secretly dealing with some kind of lack of passion, either with a fire sign or you're just feeling like your light is burning out. You know, you're just feeling like, and this is happening in your second house of resources. So Libra, this is a good time for you to set the intent for the passion to come back into your life in all areas, but especially where you work, especially financial passion, whatever that is. Maybe you need to get creative. You know, Libra, have you, you guys are excellent charmers, so you could really put that charm to work. You're ruled by Venus, okay? So passion and, and being attracted to that, that could really bring you money in abundance. But there's a lack of passion Libra's going through right now, and, and pa actually for the last month or so. Like, maybe this is, like, not, you know, really engaging in any sexual encounters or not feeling attractive or just feeling kind of, you know, not fiery. You're not feeling fiery. And that makes sense because fire is your opposite sign. Okay? So if you're dealing with an Aries or a Sagittarius or a Leo, know that they're the opposite element of you. I'm not sure if for some of you this is an unhappy fire sign. 
Um, but for most of you, I feel like this is a lack of passion when it comes to where your finances are coming from. So maybe you just need a, a new passionate job or something. Maybe that'll help all of the, because I'm sensing, I'm sensing relationship stuff and financial stuff and um, just confidence. You guys aren't feeling very confident and you're feeling like your fire is out and, and like you're not on fire anymore. Your, your light is not lit. So Libra, perfect time to transform all that. Perfect time to rise from the ashes of that energy. I just had a thought. Just had a thought and I'm not sure what it was. This is the five. Okay, the number five. So this is like the happiness energy. And in reverse, like you're not feeling very happy. You're not, oh, it was about Venus. Venus is retrograde, you guys. So, oh, hi Tyson. Hi Tyson. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this is uh, really taking a toll on relationships for some of you guys. Your ruling planet is back in Libra, but it's still retrograde until like the 16th of November. And then it's going to go through shadow period. So maybe Venus retrograde is really causing you guys to feel a lack of passion with the people you're with. And we do have differences. So there's something about differences in, in life right now. Light and dark. we got the white cat, the black cat. Maybe you're very different from the partner you're with, whether it's a fire sign or not. There's just a lack of passion on your behalf or someone else's. And you're being asked to meditate on the differences in life right now. Meditate on the differences between light and dark. Libra, you are a dual sign. So light and dark, 36. This is 9. 6 plus 3 is 9. So you're learning from differences right now. Now, this is Sagittarius energy. Some of you are dealing with Sagittarius energy. Um, so yeah, you want to, you want to learn from these differences, you know, the apple, the orange, the black, the white, masculine, feminine, you are dual and you're a scale Libra. So there's something you need to balance out here and learn from either what is balanced or what isn't. You're definitely being asked to meditate on that during this moon. Cause we have the moon now. Some of you could be dealing with Pisces meditating in secrets. Okay. About the differences between you and this cancer or this Pisces, the moon is cancer and Pisces. But yeah, Libra, uh, this full moon is a good time to set intention to restore passion in your life. And now, it may have something to do with finances and resources. I know Libra, they really like um, the material things, right? But you're more of an intellectual sign. So maybe there's even some communication that needs to come into play. But just keep in mind that there's a lot of differences right now that you need to meditate on with this full moon, okay? Or this new moon, sorry. So let's move to Sagittarius. Uh, no, let's move to Scorpio. I can't believe it. You guys are extra hidden right now, aren't you? Gee, Scorpio. Hello. Happy birthday, guys. What is going on with my Scorpio brothers and sisters? Happy new moon. Um, I know, I know you guys are going through it, okay? This is your first house, Scorpio, okay? The sun is there. Jupiter's there for a little, like, a couple more, maybe a day. Jupiter's there for, I don't know, I think Jupiter's moving into Sagittarius, today so yeah you guys have got some energy going on in your first house of self scorpio so what's going on this is about your personality this is about who you are this is the house of the i am so say it with me scorpio i am transforming i am dying i am becoming reborn Ugh, excuse me sorry i had to sniff up and that was not good so this is your first house of self self transformation self death self rebirth scorpio this is all now this one almost came out we almost had honesty come out okay so there might be something that is centered around honesty but let's really focus here for the scorpions what is the message for scorpio for this new moon in their first house this new moon in scorpio what is the message for scorpio new moon in scorpio message for scorpio new moon message for scorpio energy New moon energy for Scorpio. Oh, goodness. We had the famous trapped card come out. Three plus four is eight, guys, right? No, seven. Sorry, I'm stupid. Four plus four is eight. Scorpio, you're feeling trapped. Of course. Of course you are. Of course. Feeling trapped with all this energy. Probably trapped mentally, right? People don't realize it, but Scorpio is a very mental sign, and I'm not even sure why that is. I think you guys just obsess over certain thoughts again and again in your mind. So there's something you feel trapped in. I think you feel trapped within self, because this is all about your first house. Feeling trapped within yourself. Maybe you're feeling trapped um, with a person, place, or thing. I think all of you are feeling trapped in different ways. Trapped in this energy. Trapped in the underworld. Trapped in transformation, trapped in, in everything that's dying around you. 
trapped in this cage, right? And maybe you're you're feeling trapped, and maybe this cage is to protect you, Scorpio. But this does talk this does talk about a temporary prison, okay? This talks about a temporary prison, um, and uh, you know, wanting to fly but not being able to, you know, like the gilded cage, you know, being in prison, being trapped. Um, but maybe it's like a comfortable prison. Okay, so be careful with those gilded cages, Scorpio, because a cage is a cage. If you can't leave where you are, you're trapped, you're in prison, even if this is mental. Okay, so this is the number seven. So some of you are feeling trapped in your relationships with that Taurus full moon that just happened in your seventh house. There was a lot of completions in your relationships going on. So some of you guys could just still feel trapped um, emotionally or mentally or physically with a person that you know things are over with. But this does have everything to do with your first house, Scorpio. This is your season. It's your birthday. This is your time, okay? The sun is in your sign. The moon is in your sign. So if my message to you, even though the message is trapped, take this new moon to set intentions for yourself, okay, Scorpio? You are the house of shared resources. So you even share who you are with other people. And we all know, well, I know, how how intimate it is for Scorpio to share themselves with another person, to share who they are, to share their secrets and their emotion. I'm even feeling a little, like, almost crying right now for you guys. I just feel you. And, um, you know, this is about releasing yourself from whatever has trapped you, Scorpio. All of us are transforming because of you. So you can't forget to transform. Oh, you guys are emotional. I'm feeling that energy. I'm feeling the energy of feeling trapped and I'm feeling emotional about all this. And, you know, you guys are the suffering silence type. So you don't even ask, you know, for help. You don't you don't reach out. You're used to sharing everything with other people, but no one shares anything with you. So you have shared yourself with people, places and things and you feel you feel that Scorpio energy of regret and obsession and like revenge even you know like it's almost turning to rage because scorpio is ruled by mars and pluto so you guys like to purge and you like to rage and you go to war for transformation so just keep that in mind when it comes to this prison or when it comes to whatever you feel trapped in scorpio you know you are the phoenix and all that bird has to do is kill itself and rise again from the ashes in a different area you are the eagle so this is about you not that part of you that is not a scorpion, but an, but is a phoenix eagle, you know, that's the part of you that, that wants to fly. And you're feeling like something is holding you back, a person, a place, or a thing. So Scorpio, my message to you is to use this, this new moon for yourself. Whatever it takes, put yourself first, love yourself, you know, instead of helping someone else transform, help yourself transform. You may need to purge something right now. And we have confidence, just like Virgo got, okay? So you have you have some sort of confidence thing right now. Maybe you're not feeling very confident. Scorpio, you have to feel confident to fly, to die, to transform, to purge. All of that needs confidence. And we do have lust. Oh, my God. We have lust and love for you, Scorpio, and forbidden. So I'm sorry that this message is going to be a little bit longer for Scorpio, but there's some forbidden lust and love here. And we have forbidden and denial. Like, you guys are needing to move away from something that is just, you're reaching for something that is a, a bad fruit. Like the forbidden fruit, okay? Yes, forbidden fruit for sure. Because we have the fruit here on that tree and then forbidden on this end here. Forbidden fruit, okay? Don't go for that fruit because it's forbidden. Move away from that, Scorpio. Move away from the sea. I wish I could show you all these cards and I will. We have Scorpio moving away from deceit. Okay, there's been some deceit here that you're moving away from. You could even be taking a risk, thinking about taking a risk. We have that forbidden fruit energy here. Um, and then we have love and lust. So I've been waiting for this message to come out for someone. Love or lust. Love or lust, Scorpio. Okay, you may have a decision to make between that. Maybe you're feeling trapped. You love someone, but you're in lust with someone else. I don't know. But love and lust are opposite energies. You're really learning about how to transform love and lust. You know what I mean? But we have confidence and traps. So some of you guys are trapped and you're, you know, it has something to do with your confidence level. Scorpio, you're such a deep sign. You can, you can transform and kill all of these things. Okay. You are ruled by the underworld. So just go deep with this energy. If you have to go dark, you know what I mean? To get through these hidden secrets and stuff like that, do it, Scorpio. But the way to do it around this time of year is to focus on yourself because your first house of personality is being lit up. 
So no wonder matters of lack of confidence is coming up. Can't move forward on that horse unless you're confident. Can't fly unless you break free from this prison and, and decide whether this is lust or, lust or love. The forbidden fruit. You guys are dealing with the forbidden fruit. You know what I'm saying? So there's that whole Adam and Eve energy of, you know, like eating the fruit for knowledge and like then your innocence is gone and now you can see the nakedness of another person the garden of eden is coming up here for you guys so i'm gonna leave it there scorpio this is about you transforming okay you are transforming right now and there that does mean that parts of you are dying but you have you of all people have got to let this flow okay stabilize it later just go with what you, what you know okay now we're going to move on to Sagittarius energy, who I've been excited to talk to because more and more I'm realizing how interesting it must be to have Scorpio as your 12th house. To have Scorpio as your 12th house, Sagittarius, is really, really interesting. This is, has everything to do with your dreams. It has everything to do with your subconscious so the subconscious of Sagittarius is always secret you guys are always holding secrets in the back of your mind and that's because Scorpio is the sign right behind you and it rules it's 12 signs away from you so it's your 12th house of subconscious this is spiritual the 12th house is very spiritual Sagittarius it's the house of sacrifice so that's something Scorpio already deals with sacrificing energies and um Sagittarius the 12th house has to do with sacrifice it's the house of undoing so this is the time of year where certain things become undone for you right certain things become undone like the reset button is being hit subconsciously so maybe you're transforming your subconscious mind maybe you're transforming something spiritual you know just in time for your ruling planet to come come in so Sagittarius, that's a very interesting energy to be going through a new moon in your 12th house. So you could have a lot of dark subconscious thoughts right now, even dark dreams, because this is a very dark time. So the darkness in your subconscious is transforming Sagittarius, and there's certain things that you need to sacrifice and release about your 12th house, because the 12th house is a completion. The 12th house is the house right before the first house. So you guessed it. You go through this Scorpio energy and then you go through your first house. So before you can go through the I am, you have to go through the I am not. So the 12th house is kind of the I am not. I am undoing who I am so that I can become someone new. The card that came out for you is loyalty. Loyalty could be dealing with a Leo, could be dealing with a Scorpio. Because I have the butterfly and then we have that the sunflowers there. But there's some kind of loyalty coming up here for you, Sagittarius. Loyalty. Loyalty to the people, places, and things. A spiritual loyalty. Being loyal to, you know, these subconscious forces. I'm telling you, it's very, very interesting that you have Scorpio as your 12th house on the Zodiac Wheel. So every Sagittarius has Scorpio as their 12th house. We have the 33 up there, so that's magical. If you see any 333s or, you know, anything like that, or even 663 or 36s, 33s, 33, um, that's, that's a synchronicity here of loyalty. Loyalty is coming up here, Sagittarius. And, you know, you may be questioning certain people's loyalty right now. You know, this is a time for you to step into loyalty, though, because you got Jupiter coming into your sign. You know, Mercury's in Sagittarius. And we do have fragments, so you could be dealing with a Taurus, because Taurus got this card. So maybe you're dealing with fragmented loyalty, okay? And you're also dealing with trapped energy, just like Scorpio is. So if Scorpio is going through trapped energy, then so is Sagittarius, because Sagittarius, is that's their, their subconscious. So you're feeling subconsciously trapped, maybe with a Leo, because we have strength. And then we have you, Sagittarius. This is my Sagittarius. These are both my Sagittarius cards, and they're coming out right one after another. So, oh my God, three Sagittarius cards. These are all three cards that I... Could, I basically associate with Sagittarius because we have vision. Sagittarius, you are the ninth house of vision. And then we have that archer there, the 17. Okay, she's focusing on a vision. And then summon. Summon is also, these are, you're coming up here. And then we have message, which is another Sagittarius card because the messenger of Mercury is in your sign. So Sagittarius, I mean, there's just a lot going on with you guys because Jupiter is going back into your sign. So I don't know if you focused on a vision in the past and you summoned something, but your energy is definitely here. You need to focus on the vision with this new moon. 
okay especially because this is the number eight so there's some kind of hidden vision okay you guys could really have had visions in your sleep that you're asking to, to be fo like look at that archer she is focused on the vision and then there's something here that was summoned all right in loyalty and fragments and trapped and strength so you know i don't know if you guys are feeling trapped and weak or if you need the strength to bust out of that prison or something like that you might want to watch the Scorpio reading to know what's going on in your subconscious, okay? Anytime you want to know what's going on in your subconscious, Sagittarius, just watch something for Scorpio. Watch a message for Scorpio. But we do have fragment and loyalty. So I don't know if there's some loyalty here that's been in pieces. This is kind of a divorce energy for some of you or a breakup energy, something like that. But we do have the 15, so November 15th could be important. This is talking about staying loyal, Sagittarius, even though things are all over the place right now. Stay loyal, stay grounded, you know, stay happy, stay optimistic, Sagittarius. You are the house of optimism. So, you know, even though there's a bunch of pieces everywhere and you're feeling fragmented and all that, you know, you are still whole, Sagittarius, and you just need to stay loyal, okay? Even though you're feeling trapped. Um, I, I want to get you guys one more message just in case that didn't apply. Because I just feel strange about that message. So let's focus on Sagittarius energy and get a new moon and Scorpio message. Okay, so the card that just came out is Forbidden. Same card that Scorp uh, Scorpio just got. So it's really interesting that I said that you should focus on what's going on with Scorpio so that you know what the fuck's coming towards you. Well, Scorpio got a message about the Forbidden Fruit. You have got a message about forbidden fruit as well, Sagittarius. So, woo, what are you reaching for that is forbidden? Because you guys could be reaching for something. This is denial, okay? Denial and forbidden. Forbidden denial. But to me, this is the hidden, the forbidden fruit card. Because remember Adam and Eve, when, when whatever they reached for the fruit, and it was the, the apple of knowledge or whatever, and then it's forbidden fruit, dude. So there's a closed door that you're reaching for, Sagittarius. Um, and this is talking about not going back to bad people, places, and things. But man, does that fruit look tempting, right? Especially if it's the forbidden fruit, because you're all about knowledge, Sagittarius. So if it's something that you can learn from, you, you, you reach for it. Jupiter may be inspiring this for you to reach for things. It's up to you guys whether you open this door or not, okay? But just be careful because that apple is the same apple that Snow White ate and she died. Well, she went to sleep because of it. So there's something here about reaching for something that's a little too soon. We have the 14th of November and the 18th of November. So that might be the period of time where this forbidden fruit is really looking delicious. The denial card is all about being denied something. Okay, whatever you're being denied, Sagittarius, it's forbidden. I'm sorry to tell you guys. But now that it's like almost Sagittarius season, and now that Jupiter is going into Sagittarius, there's just certain things that you guys are going to be devoted to, and all that other shit is forbidden. Like, it's just going to be denial, and it's going to be forbidden. You're going to be denied, because you're you're going to, like, head into a lab, Sagittarius. I, like, I see you as, like, a, a scientist that has a lot of work to do, and so you're, like, in your lab, you're in your study, because Sagittarius is all about studying and learning and your philosophy. So you guys are like deep into the books right now, learning stuff. Probably some of you are in school learning. And um, everything else is forbidden fruit. And now we do have the chaos card. So some of you guys are going through chaos, maybe with the Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, maybe with a Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. We have two priestesses here, an earth sign and an air sign. So logic and intellect, logic and intellect, studying, learning, growing, expanding. That is your message. Excuse me, Sagittarius, but we have the chaos card now in that lovely number nine up there that represents the ninth house of philosophy for you. So there could be some transformation. That That is my transformation card. If there's anything that can transform something, it will be that tornado. So, Sagittarius, this is all happening underneath the scenes and behind the scenes for you, but that doesn't mean that it's not all about to head into your first house of self. So, this is the time to set new intentions subconsciously, all right? Set new intentions when it comes to spirituality and your dreams, because all of this energy is going to head into the ninth house of your home, and um, things are going to get really interesting come Sagittarius season in a, in a week or so. So hopefully that helps you out, Sagittarius. That was quite an expansive message, which I'm not surprised. So let's move on to Capricorn energy. Capricorn, you are going through 11th house energy. 
So this is all about uh, groups of people. Scorpio is all about your friends. So if you have any Scorpio friends, that, that's kind of interesting because Scorpio rules friends and groups of people for, for Capricorn. The 11th house also talks about community. It talks about uh, humani humanity and humanitarianism. So you guys might be wanting to set new intentions um, when it comes to your groups of friends. If you guys are involved, if you're ever around three or more people, that's a group. Okay, so uh, Capricorn, you could be transforming certain group uh, energies. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Um, and also, I do want to mention that you guys are the south node now, Capricorn. Yesterday, the, the, the south node moved into Capricorn. So this is, I'm going to have a whole nother video about this, and I'll talk to you guys about this in, in the November videos, but just get ready, because this is, you are bound to karma right now, Capricorn, but... To me, I realized earlier Capricorn ain't stunting this energy because they are ruled by Saturn. So they they know karma. So the North Node and the South Node, it's, it's going to be kind of easier for Capricorn. But this is all about releasing. But let's stick to this new moon for now. The new moon is a good time for you to set intentions for new friends. If you want any old friendships to resurrect or die or whatever, you can set new intentions when it comes to groups of people you're associating with. Um... This energy is collective for you. Anytime you're going through 11th house energy, it's collective. The 11th house is very collective. That's why it's the house of groups and community because it's like, you know, where, where many gather. So this is like collective transformation for you, Capricorn. If you want to transform something right now or kill something, it's going to be in groups. So this is like a genocide. <laughs> like, yeah, genocide. Genocide is the large, uh, I'm just metaphorically now, genocide is a large group of people being murdered right being killed so this is a genocide of your life you know so if it's if it's community related it's if it's um now this is also your dreams and your wishes capricorn so if there's anything that you want to kill collectively just be careful of the energy you send out especially now that you're the south node because everything's karmic now now the card that we had come out for you is playful in reverse i'm not sure if some of you are dealing with an upset kitty cat leo or if you're just being very serious capricorn this card came out in reverse so it's playful in reverse like no playing anymore i ain't playing no more i ain't fucking around all games aside all bullshit aside no games so capricorn this is a serious energy for you playful in reverse playful in reverse very serious energy you're a very serious sign capricorn you're the 10th house of future you can't be playing games right now you have a future to to build you have a mountain to climb you can't climb a mountain if you're playing around some of you this could be a leo that's out of your life or that's upset or that you broke up with or maybe a leo coming back from the past but this is you taking on a very serious energy with this new moon because this new moon happened around the same time as the shift into south node capricorn all the same time as all these votes were going on, November uh, 6th was a very, very explosive day with all the votes and everything. So Capricorn, you're the house of government. You're the house of like career. That's not a playful house. So you're being very serious with this new moon. You guys could be setting the intent to be more serious, to be less playful. Now be careful, Capricorn, because everyone needs a little bit of light and love in their life. But I don't I don't blame you. I have a Capricorn rising and I have been getting more and more serious as the days go on. So Capricorn is stepping into a very serious energy with playful in reverse. This is the number 44. So that does equal eight. That is the Scorpio energy. Some of you could be dealing with a Scorpio, but you're just not playing. If you're cross watching for a Capricorn, they ain't playing no more. You might not see Cap you now, I know Capricorn doesn't usually smile or laugh or cry, but now they're not going to be doing that even more. Before you could get a little you, you could get a little <laughs> from Capricorn, but now it's just, now it's like stone cold, you know, like you tell a Capricorn a joke and they're like, you know, like they're very serious. You guys are very serious. And the reason why you're very serious is because of the choices that are coming up from you now for the, from the light and the dark choices of the light and the dark Capricorn. And guess what? 46 equals 10. So this, this is like speaking to your 10th house of career finances your future your legacy capricorn you're getting very serious about the you got some serious choices to make here between light and dark like which way are you gonna fly now capricorn you know this man is very focused on the choices between 
you know, these choices are going to change your life. So this new moon may bring, we even have that new moon back there. This new moon is going to ask you to fly in a certain direction, okay? It may bring certain choices to the surface, like, um, which way do you want to go? Maybe this is a choice between two friends or a choice between two living residences or a choice between two very collective energies. One of these energies has to die. One of these people, places, or things has to die, Capricorn. Um, and one of them has to resurrect. So you're choosing between death and life right now. You're choosing between resurrection and dying. So no wonder you're not being very playful. No wonder you're taking on a more serious energy. Because how could you play around with, with energy like this? Like these are choices you're making now that will affect you in your future, Capricorn. And we also have forbidden fruit for you as well. You and Sagittarius and Scorpio are both being taunted with the forbidden fruit. So these are people and places and things that look good but are not good for you. And you're being forbidden and denied to do certain things. And you are doing that, Capricorn, because of the South Node in Capricorn. Welcome to karma. Even more, like this isn't going to restrict you in the same way Saturn does. This is going to restrict you for a solid 18 to 19 months. So for the next year and some change, like you are going to be bound to the North and South Node. You and Cancer. So all the eclipses are going to happen in Capricorn now. Eclipses are very powerful. So Capricorn is not in a playful mood anymore. You guys are really stepping up your game. You're climbing even higher now. And there are certain things that are just forbidden. Just like Sagittarius, just like Scorpio. You're denying certain people. You're being denied certain things. You're forbidden to reach for this fruit. This is a very Adam and Eve energy. And then we also have chaos um, and complications. So this new moon could cause some complications and some chaos for you, Capricorn. But it's okay because you've got this warrior on your side. You are the warrior. Okay? There's going to be certain wishes that come true for you. But I don't even think you guys have time to wish right now. Because they're, they're, you're not reaching for anything negative anymore. This is This is a choice. And I think one of these choices are forbidden, you know, and you're going to know it in your bones because you're ruled by Saturn. So you're going to know based on restriction where you can't like Capricorn. That, that's exactly what this is. Like you're going to know where you can and can't go based off of the restriction you feel inside. Like you, you guys know what I mean. This whole forbidden fruit thing. This is basically boundaries and restrictions. OK, saying no. Put, putting up uh, limitations and stuff. So yeah, yeah, you're you're really coming up out, coming out of that playful energy, okay. And you've got you got some very serious choices to make, Capricorn. That that is my message for you. But um, just keep in mind, this new moon is all about intent. It's all about uh, transformation and death. So this could this could be this may have something to do with you you know you resurrecting a less playful energy so that you can get the job done i heard that very strongly just now get the job done capricorn it's time to get the job done to finish him off damn oh okay i'm gonna move on to aquarius <sighs> aquarius the card came out for you already so aquarius you guys are going through 10th house energy with this scorpio new moon um, so you guys could be setting intent for your future. The 10th house is very future. The 10th house is all about your career and your finances and your legacy. The 10th house is all about your long-term goals. So you could definitely be setting new intention for a new career, um, Aquarius, or new money, new job, new finances, anything like that would we'll definitely go into the, the 10th house energy. Um, so yeah, you know, if you want something to transform about your career or if you want something to resurrect like an old career from the past or um, old money, you can resurrect your future with this energy, Aquarius. This is this is a very, you know, uh, Scorpio is a very serious 10th house. So a lot of intensity in the workplace, if you know what I mean. Um, Scorpio is intensity, Scorpio is death and rebirth, and you guys experience this in your house of career. So definitely some intensity in the career that could be coming up right now. Um, or maybe the intense pressure of, oh my God, my future, oh my God, my future. Um, my dog is an Aquarius back there. He needs to lay down. <laughs> So the card that we have coming out for you, Aquarius, is the High Priestess of Earth. So this is talking about your physical realm and reality. This is very Earth energy, just like the 10th house is. The 10th house is ruled by Capricorn. So you could be dealing with a Capricorn or a Taurus or a Virgo because this is a, an Earth sign energy. 
But this does talk about, you know, getting out into nature more if you can, grounding yourself, being more logical when it comes to this new moon and when it comes to the intent. Now, this is a very fertile energy. Earth is what every every seed needs earth. So you've got some earth here to work with, Aquarius, when it comes to um, setting these seeds of transformation. Um you know, and just being more logical, okay, when it comes to your career and setting these new intentions. If you want anything to transform about your physical reality, this is coming up. And it's the number three. So you could be communicating in a more logical way right now. Just kind of, you know, just taking part in that more lot. You already are intellectual, but logic and intellect differ in a, in a way. But remember, this is all about the transformation of your career and your finances. Maybe you're grounding yourself. Maybe you're finding a new foundation for yourself right now, communicating about that. Maybe even doing some short distance travel. Um, you know, and this is all for your future, Aquarius. The 10th house is very futuristic. So this is like grounding yourself now so that to ensure your future, if that makes sense. The bottom of the deck is individuality. So individuality, this is the number 47. So that would be 11. 4 plus 7 is 11. And then we have uh, the 10th house that you're going through. So this is really interesting. You are the 11th house Aquarius. So when this card comes up to me, I always want to think about the individuality of who we are when it comes to the masses. So if you're standing in a room full of t 100 people Aquarius, how do you differ from all of them? And you do because you're an alien. Okay, so... You know, this this is talking about your individuality when it comes to some kind of earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or maybe just grounding your, yourself physically um, for yourself as an individual. Now, we do have strength here, which is Leo. So if you're dealing with a Leo Aquarius, um, there's some fragmented, like you guys might be feeling a little bit fragmented um, as far as your strength. And then there's invisibility here. So there's like invisible pieces of strength and self-worth. So I do see Taurus here for some of you too. But individuality in, in the high priestess of earth, grounding who you are as an individual during this full moon, setting new intention um, for your who you're going to be in the future, your grounded self, Aquarius, you know, grounding yourself in your career right now, transforming who you are as an individual when it comes to your career, okay, knowing that your career can transform you as a person, okay, especially you, Aquarius, you're very serious and, you know, you spend a lot of your time worried about stability, so it's time to get really logical and your earth sign friends can help you with that. So yeah, Aquarius, this is all about your future. I feel like you're grounding yourself now so you can rely on your future, if that makes sense. So when it comes to these new intentions, be very, very mindful that you're really setting these intentions in a grounded way. So the what comes to fruition because of them is going to affect your individuality, okay? Your individuality is coming up here, Aquarius. And, um, you know, any of that, any of that that I just talked about is up for transformation and rebirth. So, you know, just keep that in mind um, when it comes to the new intentions you're setting right now, between now and the end of the month, okay? Also, I didn't mention it yet, but Scorpio does square you. So this might be, it might bring up certain career compromises that need to take place or, you know, conflict. Because square is conflict and, and they need compromise. So if you have any of that going on within finances or money or career, then that is why, Aquarius. Because Scorpio squares you. So there is a need to compromise here for your future. Okay. Let's move to Pisces. Pisces, last but not least. Pisces, this is your ninth house. So you naturally learn from all this death and rebirth energy. Whoa, our card just came out quite, quite quickly. I see why. So yeah, Pisces, this is your ninth house. So this is expansive energy for you. Around this time, you really expand and... Um, you know, learn a lot. You are very much a, a student in, I'm not sure if you're the student, you're the student and the teacher of Scorpio. So sometimes you're Scorpio's student, sometimes you're Scorpio's teacher um, when, when they allow you to teach them, I should say. So there's a lot of secret knowledge, okay, that's coming up for you right now, Pisces, since Scorpio is your ninth house, secret knowledge, hidden knowledge that you're, you're kind of becoming aware of, okay? And it's expanding. This is a new moon. So if any of you guys are in school or education or if you're doing anything like that, you don't have to be in school to educate yourself. Some of you guys are just writing more and learning more right now, expanding what you know in the hidden realms. So this is emotional knowledge as well. 
okay? You can learn a lot about your emotions around this time, Pisces, because Scorpio is a water sign. How to better stabilize your emotions, how to balance your emotions is what you could learn and expand right now. So this is about your philosophy um, of death and rebirth. So, you know, what is it that's transforming about what you believe? I don't want to forget that, but belief is is the ninth house in pisces you are also the i believe in astrology you are the house of belief but um well your your whole thing that you say is i believe in sagittarius the ninth house energy is belief which is ruled by scorpio for you so this could be the time of year where your beliefs change okay and it might be because of death it might be because of rebirth um it might be because of some kind of secret that comes out um, that you that you gain knowledge about, okay? Because you're really in the position right now to gain knowledge about secrets. So this new moon is a good opportunity for you to plant seeds of intention when it comes to what you believe. So if there's anything that you want to change or transform about your beliefs, this is a great time to do that. Um, this is a good time to purge any false beliefs or anything like that because, quite frankly, you're expanding beyond some of the beliefs that we even have in this world and realm. So you, you there may be certain things that you're not doing, you know, because you just don't resonate. Like, you be, you're you really strong about your beliefs right now. And, you know, that just shows your power because only a strong person can stand firm on their belief when everything else around them is, like, dying and transforming, okay? So, Pisces, the card we have is the moon card. This is our card. Um, it's our card in tarot. And interestingly enough, we have the same card that Virgo got. Virgo is our opposite sign. So Virgo and Pisces are like really hidden right now. Um, there's a lot of secrets. Now this is going to be a little bit different for you than it is Virgo because Virgo is going through third house. So Virgo is short distancing traveling. Pisces is long distance traveling. Okay, Pisces. Ty, will you quit looking at yourself? Try to focus. Sorry, my dog is so annoying. But um, yeah, you could there could be like some some distance that you're going with this knowledge. OK, this is a uh, long distance travel. So you could really be d traveling quite a distance, Pisces, whether it's in your dreams or whether it's behind the Tyson. <laughs> so whether it's behind the scenes or not, he just looked at me so crazy. Um, but yeah, you could be really traveling in your dreams Pisces long distance travels um and gaining knowledge that way but either way this is very secretive okay secret knowledge is really coming up here because it's the moon so the moon is our shadow side we could be learning more about our shadow side right now this could be what's transforming guys you know what this means right I'm not gonna stress out about this because like explaining it you know I'm not gonna stress out about explaining this because I think this is just something that has to be felt you know, it's a very secretive energy. <laughs> My dog will not quit licking himself. But yeah, this is about our secret happiness. It could even be a secret romance. Like I said to Virgo, you know, Virgo could be like, they, they could be holding certain secrets or whatever. Well, Pisces is expanding those secrets. That makes sense that, that Virgo is withholding certain secrets and Pisces is expanding those secrets. So we've got the moon here, guys. Not only are we studying and learning and expanding, and this is our hidden philosophy. This new moon is really putting us in our own energy, basically, because this is our energy. Could be dealing with a cancer, but to me, the moon's energy is Pisces, all right? So this is spirituality, it's secrets, it's shadow self, it's our soul. So this is like uncovering knowledge about our own soul, Pisces. Very, very, very secretive energy. So perhaps it's not about what I say, it's about what you intuitively already know, Pisces. This new moon, just know any any seeds that you plant, they're secret seeds, okay? In your secret garden. And um, whatever grows there is going to be a secret, and um, only you will be able to see it. So yeah, guys, take this as you want, but this is very hidden. Just like Cancer, I think all the water signs are just really hidden right now, because Cancer got invisible, Scorpio got trapped and then Pisces got the moon okay so Scorpio's energy is influencing the Cancers and Pisces very very invisible and hidden so the moon's energy is very potent it's time to set intent for your soul you know a member it's your ninth house so anything about um learning or studying or philosophy or your belief what are your hidden beliefs what do you believe at a soul level Pisces and also, it's the five energy. So it's definitely about your own happiness, romance, soulmate. Could be dealing with a Cancer. Could be dealing with a Leo. 
And then we have this, uh, the underlying energy is Grove, Pisces. Grove. So this is a place where you can go to heal. The Grove is a place where people go to heal. Broken hearts. This is sometimes an apology that needs to take place. So there may be some kind of secret apology that comes to fruition because of this full moon. Maybe on the November 21st. Um, maybe November 21st is a, a day of healing for you, Pisces. But this is some... Um, this is the need to heal our soul because the moon in the grove. Okay, so this new moon is a moon of healing for us, Pisces. It is. It's a moon of healing our soul, healing emotionally, healing um, certain secrets behind the scenes. But yeah, I do feel like there's some kind of uh, secret apology or something because the grove does talk about apology. 21, that's 2 plus 1 is 3. Now, on the 21st of November, you really could take part in some kind of emotional healing. But this might be the day where that apology comes in. Um, this might be the day where, you know, some kind of healing takes place at a soul level. And it could be hidden. This could be a secret realm that you know about Pisces. Or just a secret spot um, that you go to to heal. But it's some, some place. The Grove is a place. And we have cats in both these pictures. We have cats in both of these pictures. So it's like healing our feminine energy, even if you're a male. And of course, we have this message here about forbidden fruit, just like Scorpio, uh, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces got. Well, I don't know if Aquarius got this message, but Pisces and Capricorn and Scorpio and Sagittarius all got this message about forbidden fruit. See how this person is reaching up for the fruit? And then we have the card forbidden. So to me, this combination is the forbidden fruit, okay? To me, this is like um, knowledge because even forbidden is the 18 card and 8 plus 1 is 9. So forbidden knowledge, you know the whole story of Adam and Eve, Pisces, where, you know, they ate the apple or whatever and um, they got knowledge. But, you know, knowledge sometimes, you can't unknow. And even you, Pisces, there's certain things that you just can't unknow. With all these secrets coming to fruition, you know, there's certain things you just can't unsee. So it's really interesting here that a lot of us are taking part in this forbidden denial energy, certain doors that are closed forever, and you may be denied something, Pisces. You may deny other people. This is all about reaching for something that isn't ripe, but together, for me, this is seriously a forbidden, a forbidden fruit energy. So that's up to you to decide, Pisces, what is no longer good for you, what you should not reach for anymore. And we have the complicated card, okay, the complicated warrior you're fighting something complicated right now, but you know, Pisces, what you should and shouldn't reach for, right? But the main message of this new moon is to heal, okay? Healing your soul, healing your feelings, healing what what is hidden, okay? And maybe taking an oath when it comes to some kind of choice, okay? Whatever choice you make around this new moon, Pisces, it, you're going to need to commit to it, and, and it's a promise, Okay? So, yeah, Pisces, this is all about transformation, okay? All about transformation, death, and rebirth. So, you know, apply that energy to the seeds that you're planting around this time, guys. And just know, Pisces, that this is a very expansive energy for you. So whatever you plant is going to expand. So before I go, let's just get uh, one card for everyone, just in case, you know, the message didn't apply to you. We're going to get an overall message for the Scorpio New Moon. So what is the overall message? For the Scorpio new moon. Scorpio new moon. What is the Scorpio new moon message for the collective? For all signs. What is the Scorpio new moon for the collective? Scorpio new moon for the collective and for all signs. Oh. Well, the fact that my nose just started running actually helped these cards come out. So let's see. We have... This is a this is it. We have letting go and fulfillment. So of course the letting go card would come out. This is the number twenty two. So we've got some twos going on here, guys. If you see that up there, twenty. We've got two two two. So if you see any twos, two two two, two, all that, all any combination of two like that, um, even four four four. But I'm seeing two. If you see any triple twos, like look at the clock and it's two twenty two or something like that, um, or you look at your battery and it's twenty two percent. Like that's a new moon synchronicity. This new moon for some reason is very linked uh, for all of us to twos. But we have a message here about letting go of fulfillment. In in this combination, it really looks like this is poison. You know, things that have fulfilled us before, Scorpio will show you that. Scorpio knows the difference between wine and poison. You know, they are a scorpion, so they do have a poisonous tail. 
So this is letting go of something that once fulfilled us, but doesn't fulfill us anymore. Or maybe this is a message about letting go of um, something so we can become fulfilled. But before we can fill our cup, right? This is the very Ace of Cups energy fulfillment. Um, we have to let go of something. This is my Scorpio energy anyway. This this reminds me of Scorpio energy because Scorpio is all about transformation and letting go. You know, you have to let go of life before you can die. You have to let go of what's wrong before you can go towards what's right, you know. So letting go of what, all, what, what no longer serves us. We have these butterflies here. This is so Scorpio. Scorpio is all about transformation, death and rebirth. So the caterpillar must go so the butterfly can flow. So letting go of things that are, ca that you know, what fulfilled the caterpillar may not fulfill the butterfly, okay? So as you change and transform and become reborn and rise as something, because that's what Scorpio season does for everyone, you know, it, it definitely, it, it changes us into stronger, better people, a newer, pure, uh, more raw version of ourselves. So we may not hold on to the same things that we held on once to before, this is about letting go of, of some pretty tough stuff, guys. Like letting go of love for some of us. Letting go of addictions. Letting go of whatever we felt fulfilled us before. Whether it was a person, a place, or a thing. So the whole the whole message here is about letting go of, you know, a cup that was once filled. Um, so what do you want to kill? What do you want to resurrect? Well, this has something to do with that message, guys. Um, and all these twos, obviously, is a synchronicity from the universe. So... You know, this new moon is about setting new intentions of fulfillment, letting go of what we want to die. That's all you have to do. This Scorpio energy will kill it for you. You don't have to go out and kill something. You know, the energy will just do it for you. That's the good thing about Scorpio. It's like in a in time of dying, there's no need for killing. Like there's no need for murder or anything like that because everything's already dying. I mean, it's kind of like going out and killing a tree right now. Like, the, the, the tree's already dying. It's The leaves are already dying. So to kill it, it would, it would just be unnecessary. So there's, like, something here about the natural process of death. Just letting go and surrendering, okay? And then that's when you're going to get your fulfillment. You may have to let go. Of, like, this energy may ask you to let go of something that really, really fills you just so that you can get something better. So really powerful message there, guys, uh, f the fulfillment of letting go. Letting go will fulfill you around this time. So just interpret that. However, guys, um, the bottom of the deck is movement. So we are going to be moving with this energy um, as individuals. There is a message here, okay, um, that some of us may de need to deny, but ultimately it's letting go, okay, in the name of fulfillment. And we even have this little dragonfly right there. So, for some of you, maybe there's a dragonfly involved in butterflies. So, guys, uh, you know what it is you need to let go of, whether it's emotion, whether it's, you know, something at a soul level or just something intuitive that you need to let go of. But I, I really think this is a very powerful message. And thank you guys so much. For those of you who watched the whole video or if you just watched for your signs, that's okay. Um, thank you for watching and allowing me to be the messenger of this new moon. I think it's a very, very um, sacred and intimate time for all these energies that came up today. So I'm going to get off here and upload this video so you guys can see as quick as possible. Happy new moon to all of you guys. And, um, you know, in this time of dying, it's really ironic that we feel more alive than ever. So I guess I'll just see you guys all at the grave. Okay, see you later, guys.